Audience response. Audience response is a type of interaction associated with the use of audience response systems to create interactivity between a presenter and its audience. Systems for co-located audiences combine wireless hardware with presentation software, and systems for remote audiences may use telephones or web polls for audiences watching through television or the internet. Various names are used for this technology, including real-time response, the worm, dial testing, and audience response meters. In educational settings, such systems are often called student response systems or personal response systems. The handheld remote control that students use to convey their responses to questions is often called a clicker. More recent entrants into the market do not require specialized hardware. There are commercial and open source, cloud-based tools that allow responses from the audience using a range of personal computing devices such as cell phones smartphones, and laptops. These types of systems have added new types of functionality as well, such as free text responses that are aggregated into sortable word clouds, as well as the more traditional true-slash-false and multiple-choice style questions. This type of system also mitigates some of the concerns articulated below in the challenges of audience response section. Co-located audiences Hardware-based audience response, the presenter uses a computer and a video projector to project a presentation for the audience to see. In the most common use of such audience response systems, presentation slides built with the audience response software display questions with several possible answers, more commonly referred to as multiple choice questions. The audience participates by selecting the answer they believe to be correct and pushing the corresponding key on their individual wireless keypad. Their answer is then sent to a base station, or receiver, that is also attached to the presenter's computer. The audience response software collects the results, and the aggregate data is graphically displayed within the presentation for all to see. Some clickers also have additional keys, allowing the presenter to ask and audience members to answer, true-slash-false questions or even questions calling for particular numerical answers. Depending on the presenter's requirements, the data can either be collected anonymously, for example, in the case of voting, or it can be traced to individual participants in circumstances where tracking is required, for example, classroom quizzes, homework, or questions that ultimately count towards a student's course grade. Incoming data may also be stored in a database that resides on the host computer, and data reports can be created after the presentation for further analysis. Software-slash-cloud-based audience response, the presenter uses a computer to create the questions, sometimes called polls. In this case however, those questions can be open-ended, dial testing, and votable open-ended as well as multiple choice. Those questions are then downloaded into the presenter's presentation program of choice. During the presentation, the questions automatically display within the presentation program, or from a web browser, and can in some cases even be displayed only on the participant's tablet computer or smartphone. Dot results are instantly tabulated via the internet, and presented on screen in real time, including grading the correct answer if desired. Some services offer presenters real-time moderation for open-ended responses or questions prior to displaying them on screen. Depending on the presenter's requirements, the data can be collected anonymously, or it can be traced to individual participants who have created accounts in advance of the poll. This method is commonly used on corporate training where attendance must be verified, and in classrooms, where grades must be assigned. Data from both methods can be saved and analyzed by the presenter and loaded manually or via API into learning management systems. Distributed, virtual, or hybrid. Only software or cloud-based audience response systems can accommodate distributed audiences, due to the inconveniences and costs of hardware devices. Benefits. There are many reasons for the use of audience response systems, ARS. The tendency to answer based on crowd psychology is reduced because, unlike hand-raising, it is difficult to see which selection others are making. The ARS also allows for faster tabulation of answers for large groups than manual methods. 
Additionally, many college professors use ARS systems to take attendance or grade answers in large lecture halls, which would be highly time-consuming without the system. Audience response offers many potential benefits to those who use it in group settings. Challenges Audience response systems may present some difficulties in both their deployment and use. Applications Audience response is utilized across a broad range of industries and organizations. A few examples include Audience response systems An audience response system, ARS, or personal response system, PRS, allow large groups of people to vote on a topic or answer a question. Depending on the solution chosen, each person has a device with which selections can be made, or a mobile device that they can use to respond. In a hardware solution, each remote communicates with a computer via receivers located around the room or via a single receiver connected to the presenter's computer using a USB connector. In a software solution, each device communicates with the question via SMS or the Internet. After a set time, or after all participants have answered, the system ends the polling for that particular question and tabulates the results. Typically, the results are instantly made available to the participants via a bar graph displayed on the projector but can also be viewed in a web browser for some systems. In situations where tracking is required, the serial number of each remote control or the student's identity number is entered beforehand in the control computer's database. In this way the answer of each individual can later be identified. In addition to the presenter's computer and projector, the typical audience response system has the following components. History Since the 1960s, a number of companies have offered response systems, several of whom are now defunct or changed their business model. Circa 1966, Audience Studies Institute of Hollywood, California developed a proprietary analog ARS system for evaluating the response of a theater audience to unreleased motion pictures, television shows and commercials. This early ARS was used by RC's clients, major motion picture and television studios and advertising agencies, to evaluate the effectiveness of whatever it was they wanted to accomplish, for example, selling more products, increasing movie ticket sales, and achieving a higher fee per commercial slot. Often, a client would show different versions to different audiences, for example different movie endings, to gauge their relative effectiveness. RC would give out free tickets on the street to bring people into the theater, called the preview house, for particular showings where each attendee would fill out a questionnaire and then be placed in a seat with a dial handset outfitted with a single knob that each attendee would turn to a position to indicate his or her level of interest. Turning the knob all the way left for dull to turning all the way to the right for great. In 1976, RC upgraded their system to become fully digital, have yes slash no buttons and, in some cases, numeric keys for entering in numbers, choices and monetary amounts. Dot. Another of the industry's very earliest systems was the consensor. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, William W. Bill Simmons, an IBM executive, reflected on how unproductive most meetings were. Simmons had become essentially a non-academic futurist in building up IBM's long-range planning operations. He was one of the pioneers of applied future studies in the private sector, that is, future studies applied to corporate planning. Through this work he had met Theodore J. Ted, Gordon of the Futures Group, now part of Palladium International. Gordon had conceived and partially developed what would today be called an audience response system, and Simmons immediately saw practical applications for it in large corporate meetings, to allow people to air their true opinions in anonymous fashion, so that each individual's like at scale answer value for a question would remain secret, but the group's average, weighted with weighting factors, would be instantly displayed. Thus, something approximating, the group's true consensus would be known, even though individual middle managers or aspiring junior executives would not have to jeopardize their conformity to effect this result. IBM's organizational culture was famous for its valuing of conformity, and this was common at other firms, too. Simmons retired from IBM in January 1972, 
and soon after he formed a startup company with Gordon, called Applied Futures Incorporated, to develop and market the system, which they called the Consensa. Applied Futures was one of the first audience response companies. In 1972, while Gordon and his assistant Harold Des. Hal, Becker were still working on development, Applied Futures filed for a patent, US Patent 3,766,541, which was granted in 1973 with Gordon and Becker as inventors. Another patent, filed for in 1974 and granted in 1976, U.S. Patent 3,947,669, lists Simmons and James A. Marquis. Sales began in 1974. The consensor was a system of dials, wires, and three lights, red, yellow, and green. A question was asked verbally and people would turn their dials anywhere from 0 to 10. If the majority agreed, the green lamp would light. If not, either the yellow or red lamp would light, depending on the level of disagreement. Dot. Although business was strong for this fledgling company, the command and control management style of the day proved a formidable opponent to this new tool, which promoted consensus building. In his memoir Simmons describes how junior executive sales prospects tended to like the idea, imagining themselves heroically speaking truth to power, but not paying any price for being a maverick, while their senior executive bosses tended to see the consensor as a blatant attempt to impose democratic procedures into a corporate hierarchy that is anything but democratic. Simmons observed that a majority of corporations are run as fiefdoms, with the CEO playing the role of supreme power, he may be a benevolent dictator, but nonetheless still a dictator. He described this type of senior executives, with ironic tone, as secure in the knowledge of their own infallibility. Nonetheless, Applied Futures sold plenty of units to business firms and government agencies. In October 1984, it became a subsidiary of Brooks International Corporation, a management consulting firm. One of the early educational uses of an audience response system occurred at Rice University. Students in a computer-equipped classroom were able to rate how well they understood portions of a lecture, answer multiple-choice questions, and answer short essay questions. Results could be tallied and displayed to the class. Audience response technology has evolved over time, moving away from hardware that required extensive wiring towards handheld wireless devices and small, portable receivers. In the 1980s, the Consensor product line evolved toward peripherals that could be plugged into a PC, and a software application to run thereon. Wireless LANs allow today's peripherals to be cordless. Another example of this is Microsoft's Mouse Mischief, a PowerPoint add-in, which has made it easier for teachers, professors, and office professionals to integrate audience response into their presentations. The advent of smartphones has made possible systems in which audience members download an app, or run it as SaaS in their web browser, which then communicates with the audience response system, which is itself just software running on someone's device, whether desktop, laptop, tablet, or phone, via the local wireless network, the cellular telephone network, or both. In this model, the entire audience response system is a software product, all of the hardware is what the users brought with them. Experts There are two books that have been written specifically about audience response systems by people who are considered experts in the use of audience response technology. In 2009, Derek Bruff, a professor at Vanderbilt University, published Teaching with Classroom Response Systems, Creating Active Learning Environments. In 2015, David Camp, a meeting strategist and civic engagement consultant, released Read the Room for Real, How a Simple Technology Creates Better Meetings was published, this book focused on using audience response technology in non-academic environments. Hardware The majority of current audience response systems use wireless hardware. Two primary technologies exist to transmit data from the keypads to the base stations, infrared IR, and radio frequency RF. A few companies also offer web-based software that routes the data over the internet, 
sometimes in a unified system with IR and RF equipment. Cell phone based systems are also becoming available. Infrared. The oldest of these technologies, IR audience response systems are better suited for smaller groups. IR uses the same technology as a TV remote, and is therefore the only one of the four technologies that requires line of sight between the keypad and receiver. This works well for a single keypad but can fail due to interference when signals from multiple keypads arrive simultaneously at the receiver. IR systems are typically more affordable than RF systems, but do not provide information back to the keypad. Use in educational settings. Audience response systems can be used as a way of incorporating active learning in a lecture or other classroom type setting, for example by quizzing students, taking a quick survey, etc. They can also be used for taking attendance. They can be used effectively by students as young as 9 or 10, depending on their maturity level. An educator is able to generate worksheets and let students enter their answer choices at their own pace. After each question, the educator is able to instantly show the results of any quiz, for example in the form of histogram thus creating rapid two-way feedback about how well learners are doing. The fact that students can send responses anonymously means that sensitive topics can be included more readily than would otherwise be the case. An example of this is in helping students to learn about plagiarism. Audience response systems can also be used in classroom settings to simulate randomized control trials RCT, such as Live the Trial, a mock RCT used to teach the concepts of clinical research. The mock trial answered the question do red smarties make you happier? Radio frequency RF. Ideal for large group environments, RF systems can accommodate hundreds of voters on a single base station. Using some systems, multiple base stations can be linked together in order to handle audiences that number in thousands. Other systems allow over a thousand on just one base. Because the data travels via radio frequency, the participant merely needs to be within range of the base station, 300 to 500 feet. Some advanced models can accommodate additional features, such as short word answers, user login capabilities, and even multi-site polling. Internet. Web-based audience response systems work with the participants' existing computing devices. These include notebook computers, smartphones and PDAs, which are typically connected to the Internet via Wi-Fi, as well as classroom desktop computers. If the facilitator's computer is also Wi-Fi enabled, they can even create their own IP network, allowing a closed system that doesn't depend on a separate base station. The web server resides on or is accessible to the facilitator's computer, letting them control a set of web pages presenting questions. Participants log into the server using web browsers and see the questions with forms to input their responses. The summarized responses are available on a different set of pages, which can be displayed through the projector and also on each participant's device. Internet has also made it possible to gather audience responses in massive scale. Various implementations of the concept exist. For example, Microsoft featured Bing Pulse during the 2013 State of the Union US, address by President Barack Obama. The system allowed registered users to input their responses, positive, negative, neutral, to the address and visualize the results as a trending graph in real time. Bing Pulse has since been used to cast over 35 million votes during national news broadcasts and other live meetings. Over 10,000 viewers powered the iPower Wow Viewer Vote which tracked live viewer emotional response for Channel 7 during the 2013 Australian federal election debates and displayed as a live worm graph on the broadcast screen. For advertising and media research, online dial testing using an on-screen scale slider that is controlled by a mouse, or finger swipe on a touch screen is being used in conjunction with surveys and online communities to gather continuous feedback on video or audio files. Cell phone. The familiarity and widespread use of cell phones and text messaging has now given rise to systems that collect SMS responses and display them through a web page. These solutions don't require specialized voting hardware, but they do require telecom hardware, 
such as a mobile phone, and software, along with a web server, and therefore tend to be operated by dedicated vendors selling usage. They are typically favored by traveling speaking professionals and large conference halls that don't want to distribute, rent, or purchase proprietary ARS hardware. Computing devices with web browsers can also use these service cells through SMS gateways, if a separate web interface isn't provided. Cell phone-enabled response systems, such as SMS response system, are able to take text inputs from the audience and receive multiple responses to questions per SMS. This allows a new pedagogical approach to teaching and learning, such as the work by Derek Bruff and an initiative on SMSRS. The advantage of using such SMS type of response system is not limited to the logistical advantage of the presenter keeping no device inventory, it comes with an associated range of pedagogical advantages, such as agile learning, peer instruction as possible with all types of response systems, it affords additional educational features like Magu reasoning, a feature developed in a SMSRS system in Singapore that allows respondents to tag a reason to their choice of options in an MQ thus eliminating potential case of guessing the correct answer syndrome, and text mining of SMS responses, to provide the gist of the messages collectively in a visual map. Interactive SMS forum is another feature that is proprietary to SMS type response systems where audiences not only post their questions, but can also answer the questions posted by others via SMS. Smartphone, HTTP voting. With increasing penetration of smartphones with permanent internet connections, live audience response slash voting can be achieved over the HTTP protocol. SMS is still a solid solution because of its penetration and stability, but won't easily allow multi-voting support and might cause problem with multi-country audiences. The issue with SMS not supporting multi-country audiences is projected to be solved with SMS hubbing. In classrooms and conferences with Wi-Fi support or anywhere with GPRS coverage, software systems can be used for live audience feedback, mood measurement or live polling. These systems frequently support voting with both mobile apps as well as mobile browsers. These apps invoke available local area networks LAN, and provide a charge free and cuts the needs to devoted hardware. With mobile apps and browser-enabled voting, there aren't any setup costs for hardware since the audience uses their own phones as voting devices and the result is often presented in any browser controlled by the lecturer. With a standard mobile browser solution these are click-and-go solutions without additional installations. Therefore, live audiences can be reached, and smartphone voting can be used, as with SMS, in any number of different locations. With the GPRS solution the audience does not necessarily need to be in the same area as the lecturer as with radio frequency, infrared or Bluetooth based response systems. Software Audience response software enables the presenter to collect participant data, display graphical polling results, and export the data to be used in reporting and analysis. Usually the presenter can create and deliver her entire presentation with the ARS software either as a standalone presentation platform or as a plug-in to PowerPoint or Keynote. 